I actually, in, I think, 2014, I sent Killer Bootlegs an email mm -hmm. um, asking him something about, like, because I wasn't really sure, something about, like, the legality of mm -hmm. it. Right. I, I don't know. I don't know why I was pretty uh, interested in that then, but I, I asked him about the legality of it. Like, he said, I think because I wanted to do it, but I didn't want to get in trouble. Right. Um, that's but, funny uh, that he was asking you because then he calls me and asks me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you're talking about the graphic design. Yeah. And, and what I always talk to artists about and what you, I don't know if someone explained it to you or, you know, you just intuitively, it, it happened for you is that um, you have a voice and that I can look at your work from across the room and I know that it's yours. Oh, right? yeah, well, thanks and for so, saying like so that. And I try to explain that concept to so many artists, like they're, you know, do one thing one way and one thing another way. And, you know, the, there is a, a struggle, you know, I always use the, the example of like going to an Eagles concert you know if you pay you know however much two hundred dollars to go to an eagles concert whatever how much whatever however much a concert ticket is these days like yeah. when i was a kid it was like 20 bucks and now it's like two thousand bucks it's crazy but if you go to that show and they don't play hotel california you are pissed you're like <laughs> yeah, i just yeah. spent like five hundred dollars on two tickets and you didn't play my song and you know believe me they don't want to play that song they hate that song. They wrote that song 60 years ago. Like they don't want to ever play it again, but they kind of have to. And so artists kind of get into this, this mode where like you, you do something, you get known for something, you want to be versatile and do something different sometimes, but then people kind of push you back uh, into a mode. So it's, it's kind of like to, to start out so early and have a voice and have a, have people especially at 17 like you know you have a style that everyone can recognize i think that's a great thing it will just become difficult as you get older when you decide like i want to do something different and then yeah. you sometimes you get rewarded for that and then sometimes people like they push you back into the box that they want you in <laughs> i will say I, I i definitely i i think that the consistency you know can be both a good and a bad thing i'm happy i have it you know mm -hmm. um because it's sort of like uh, brand identity but I think that um, it definitely affects me a little bit in a negative way when I want to do uh, much else that sort of strays beyond my little mm -hmm. my little bubble I've noticed like sure. you know people aren't really as into the I tried to make a horror movie figure and um, I, I people like a specific thing for me you know which I'm not complaining about because I, I'm going to try to cultivate that thing mm -hmm. um, when I used to sort of try, like I had it, but I didn't. Um, I've grown a lot more, I guess, to appreciate um, people expecting something. You know, mm -hmm. I think that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would just like to maybe make the whole. You know, it's it's like the whole reason for a lot of these things that I make to exist is just to be like an aesthetic sort of. Sure. Uh, an aesthetic product or an aesthetic like uh, I don't know. That's sort of like the most important thing for me. Mm -hmm. Just for I, it to look I, cool, I guess. I but, think uh, I think you're fortunate that you came up with a brand name as as one does in this scene, like the Neko Satsu Toys. And what that does for you up to do is if you want to stray a little farther, right? It's almost like you know, if you're in the Eagles, like you can go on your solo career and you know you could just be Don Henley, you know, or What's the other dude's name? Never mind. That doesn't matter. <laughs> you understand the point, though. It's like yeah, yeah. You, can, you okay. could actually change the brand uh, for the different style. I have someone asking here, wanting to know where you're from. Oh, uh, New York State, Hamburg, New York. Got it. So the last time I saw you in person was years ago in New York, and we're talking about what, right? I think you were still in high school, correct? Yeah. And you were trying to decide where to go to school and what to study and what to do what did what did you end up doing what has been the last two years been like 
Uh, well, I did actually, I, I started, I am going to school for graphic design, mm -hmm. um, which I'm, I'm really, I, I love it. I'm really excited about it. I've learned a lot already mm -hmm. just from having a proper education in it instead of, you know, mm -hmm. just, I used to sort of, I, you know, really liked graphic design, but before I had, um, you know, I kind of like knew a lot of the rules. I sort of, you know, relied on, you know, maybe an intuition of, of, I've seen a lot of graphic design, I guess, being done because my mom is a graphic design teacher. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm, you're saying I'm, you knew, I, I you, got, you, oh, so sorry. you knew, in, you knew intuitively, like, so, cause all the work that you did up to that point, like without like training, you just intuitively like the way it looked and it just felt right. And so how, yeah, how do you think? Yeah, more or less. I mean, I it, it definitely like. I mean, I and I look at some of my past designs. You know, like I love uh, the some of the old stuff I did, but it it is definitely um, maybe not quite as streamlined or as uh, you know focused on the rules. I I guess of design as what I make now is. I'm a little more careful. I think is how I, I would see. describe so it. So in the in the art world, they, the art world, they would call that your juvenilia. <laughs> sure, yeah yeah right that's that's the innocent time you know before like you another knew planet, anything. but i know right you, right yeah um so you find that that as you're learning the rules in school about the way things should be um do you find those constraining or you find that that that's helping your work sometimes it is constraining i think that it depends on what i'm working on i definitely find it harder it's frustrating sometimes. I, I definitely find it harder to just sit down and work on something, like start something new. Mm -hmm. I used to be able to just go uh, without really having to have a very developed idea in my head, but now that I feel like it's more of a deliberate process from what I've learned in school, it's a lot harder mm -hmm. for me to be spontaneous sometimes, um, which is frustrating with when I don't always I don't always want to have a developed idea of what I want to make before I start designing. The cards are what I do first, some you know mostly before I think of the figure. So it it's sort of just that that's like the biggest thing I would say is a hindrance. But other than that, I think that the whole thing is just a really powerful thing for me to have. Um, it's but it but it's been it's been a little difficult of an adjustment. I think just. Like, like there's, there's a little voice in the back of my head now uh, telling, you know, like I, I kind of know some of the things that I used to like to do maybe aren't mm -hmm. the, the smartest choices from a design perspective anymore. Mm -hmm. So be spontaneous, I think is what I would say. But isn't that the kind of thing is like, you have to learn the rules and then once you learn the rules, then it's okay to break them kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, to like, if you're just breaking the rules and you just don't know what you're doing, like, you know, it's like pretty clear that like you look at Picasso's painting, he could probably paint an apple like photorealistic, like if he had oh, yeah. to, but he chooses not to, you know, it's like, yeah. um, now there's some people like when I was talking to, uh, Mark Todd yesterday, um, this is a Mark Todd figure and, you know, he teaches at art center out here in Pasadena. Yeah. And he, he was talking about how much difficulty he had um you know drawing with uh a painting with oils and trying to get you know what he you know trying to struggle through those classes and that, that he had instructors that then saw his style and helped nurture him i i feel like is that i mean what is art like i can't imagine like what art school is like today um i mean what are what are the teachers like i mean is it is it open or what is graphic does how does graphic design school differ from like you know other art school i mean i don't i don't really know no correct okay, yeah, well, well, no, no, no. But, but, well, i could i could say Stupid like questions i could compare well no 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 i mean i i could i i guess i don't i guess i wouldn't know really how um how college art schools operate but i will say that you know in graphic design, I, I am sort of led to just, there's a lot of freedom, but there's a lot of structure too. I think that um, I'm given a good amount 
of, you know, like, well, uh, okay, so my, my mom is actually my professor, <laughs> maybe I should have said before, but um, so just because I, I go to the school where she teaches, and uh, mm -hmm. well, yeah, that's how that works. Does, does that make it cheaper, hopefully? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so you're not like going into part crazy of my method. Yeah, that's part yeah, that's, of my that's, yeah. That is a dream come true. Like, yeah, no, I, I so many people anyway. spending so much money and coming out of school just so far behind in debt. So, yeah, like, no, we were worried about that for my brother. So I'm happy that you know to give uh, my parents a little bit of a of a break. <laughs> got it. Where's your but, brother going? To, where's your brother doing? He's going to purchase. Uh -huh. purchase for journalism wow yeah um and uh and you're you're twins correct yep yeah i mean so, and that and i don't know just like it's kind of crazy like you have twins who like have right you have the same genes basically right <laughs> yeah i guess so i mean and then you're born and then like your experiences just you know just go in different ways and you end up you know, pursuing art and uh, he goes to journalism school, which is an art in and of itself, but you know, writing is an art, but you know what I mean? It's like uh, individual arts. It's uh yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's, it's interesting. Like we didn't really diverge it. You, you know, you'd think that, you know, we all of our, our interests align so mm -hmm. strongly, like so much, we basically like all the same things. I think it just depends on what we look for in those different things that sort of, uh, you know, like, for example, you know, we, we, we all, we like all the same sort of media, but he appreciates the writing in it more. And I appreciate the, you know, more like the, the visual sure. part of a lot of this stuff. So I, I think that, you know, we, we definitely stayed on a steady path and continue to of liking all the same stuff, just sort of in a, in a different way, you know? Right. Um, I guess I'm asking these questions about art school because I went to film school and it was just very frustrating uh, being taught by all of these, you know, frustrated filmmakers who couldn't hack it themselves. Um, yeah. And this, you know, I just remember this poor guy, like, you know, had made a film and the, the you know, no one, no one ever asked, you know, this, this guy sitting in front of the crowd and he made this film and no one ever asked him what he was trying to say or how I can help you say what you're trying to say better. Yeah. You know, this one professor is arguing like this movie is about like, you know, the, the gay love of the father and the other teacher says, no, it's the Oedipal love of the mother. And this kid is just sitting here and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was like, it was just oblivious. He's like, I just made a, a movie. I thought it was funny. And it's like, oh, no, dude. So I was like, oh, this is a farce. Like, what am I doing here? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Someone has a question. Um, Henny, does it make it easier or harder having your mom as a teacher? Um, I really like it. I'm fortunate to have a really close relationship with my mom. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's a very like communal environment in the class. Anyway, it's a really small class, and a lot of mm -hmm. the people in the class are my friends so mm -hmm. you know it, it's it's a very relaxed working environment very easy to to, to work in i think um so but yeah no she, I, I i like it has she actually been uh one of your teachers in in a class she is my professor for my all my graphic design classes so far wow yeah Crazy. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was a my, little... My mom is watching right now. I, oh, yeah? I, I don't know that, like, that would work in, in our situation. Are you being <laughs> a good kid? I love you, mom. <laughs> I'm a good kid. I just, I don't know. <laughs> that would be kind of crazy. Um, so let's talk about, like, where the... Um, where was the first place... How were you introduced to this whole resin art scene? Well, I mean, I... on. Online, you know, I, I would, Quinn and I are really big Transformers fans. Mm -hmm. So, and we were really into looking at Transformers customs, which were like pretty popular to make in, you know, I guess like the early and mid 2000s. Mm -hmm. um, there was a little bit of a community around it with, you know, some artists that aren't really, they're not very active anymore. 
mm-hmm. but there was like rumble frenzy something and i don't really remember specifically but uh of the artist but um you know but you look up transformers customs and, and custom toys i guess we were really into customizing stuff we didn't really do it ourselves but we were very we wanted to do it someday but you look up that stuff enough and you know i would see like images on google images of like you know some people's bootlegs like falcon mm-hmm. toys stuff and you know some killer bootlegs things and you know uh, eventually in like 2014 i kind of i read rediscovered it or i sort of i saw those images again and really wanted to know what all that stuff where that came from you know especially mm-hmm. with falcon toys and killer bootlegs both i because they were on a lot of blogs so there's a lot of images of their of their work mm-hmm. Um, pretty accessible. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's not that exciting. Basically, I I saw images of them and then I wanted to to learn more about mm-hmm. them. You know, it, really, it took me like to get an Instagram. I noticed mm-hmm. that some of them were on Instagram, so I, I that's why I got an Instagram and started. You know, and and I sort of found the community just on looking at who everyone else followed on Instagram. I kind of started with Killer Bootlegs and found, you know, the the pantheon of everyone else. Right. And so uh, the figure, the figure that you made for us when you were seventeen, was that your first figure? No, I I, I did a few before, just like an independent mm-hmm. release thing. Um, I which did. One, which was your first figure? It was Darth Vapor. Darth um, Vapor. It was this. Yeah, I have that one. Up, yeah, yeah, you do. You were yeah. you were one of my first customers. It was one of your first customers. It was a lot of people's first customer. <laughs> I remember, well, no, I, remember, a sucker. I, I just, I have this image on my phone of the package of that figure packed up with your address on it. And I refer uh-huh. to it every time that I need to know your address. <laughs> I did it yesterday. That's, that's why you keep sending stuff to my house instead of the warehouse. <laughs> it is actually. That's why they email the address. <laughs> <laughs> I sent yes. something to your house yesterday. I hope that's not a uh, I'll, I'll get it. Don't worry. Okay. I hope the well, kids I don't. I hope the kids don't, don't rip it open and like, hey, what's this? Is this for me? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So you know, I, I I had I guess that sort of early exposure. I was always interested in making toys because I have always liked to make things and usually what I'd like to make is my biggest interest, you know, but it's never really, things that I've made have never really diverged outside of, of toys. I used to draw a lot, but other than that, I mean, I still do, but yeah, other than that, I just, it's basically just been toys from the beginning. <laughs> I, yeah. And where do you, um, I guess I'm assuming something with this question that you are not making a living selling your figures now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if that is the case, do you, I mean, if that was your job, if you could make a living, yeah, you know, only making figures, would that be satisfying enough, or do you think, you know, you would go into graphic design and you know, either do um, your own work or work for other people? Honestly, I I really would I really would enjoy this being my job. I don't think it would take the the fun out of it. I mean, I do know there I do think there'd be a lot more pressure, and I used to have a lot of uh, anxiety about pro- being prolific. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to, I, I mean, throughout high school and stuff, I worked on this all day, every day, like it was my job or like I needed to do it, right. you know, when I didn't. And I, and I, now I have a more, a, a schedule where I'm a little more, I've calmed down, you know, I'm a little mm-hmm. more relaxed and the money's all right. Like, you know, I, I, it's not an expense for me to do it anymore, which is really, I mean, I'm really thankful for that. But I would totally. You have, you have you have some extra money coming in, which is you know for someone your age that's pretty good, rather than uh, you know what I, I would say most people your age like. Well, thanks. Could be you know taking just blowing money. You know it's just yeah. I don't know. It just seems I don't know what it's like now, but it just seems it's like it's getting harder and harder. Yeah, I mean when I was younger, like you know kids in high school would go get a job at McDonald's. You know. And yeah now you know post 2008 like i mean that just went away like the high the high school job you know i don't know what it's like for you but most people i know like high school age like they can't get a job they're competing with like you know 60 year olds for that same job like you know well that might be true but i'm i mean i do know quite a few people my age that have jobs do they um you know like there's a supermarket near me that 
you know, like half my school works, <laughs> half my okay. high school works in. Um, cool. And like, uh, my brother has a job. So um, mar the market in Los Angeles might be a little different. Maybe. Yeah, this is a pretty small town. I don't know. Mm, that makes sense. But, uh, um, oh, but, I, but I, I think that, yeah, I would, I mean, if this was my job, I would just, it would be, I would, I would love that. I think that'd be great. You, you would be a happy camper. Yeah. So let's just talk about the content of your work. Okay. Or let's, how about the name, Nekosatsu? You like, I've asked you before what it meant and you like, you didn't want to talk about it. Do you still oh, not I, want to talk about it? No, I'll talk about it. <laughs> but no, I, it's not some big, like, you know, you know, some conspiracy or anything. <laughs> no. uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, all right. So it was my, in, in, it was my DeviantArt username uh -huh. when I was in uh, middle school. Um, I really like someone's at the door. Yeah. So, you know, it was my username for that. And it, I mean, it's to me anyway, it's a very, it's a very middle school username sounding name. It maybe right. just I have that association with it because it is it a real called, word or did you make it up? I did. I just made it up. I mean, I, you know, I, I sort of contrived a meaning for it, but uh -huh. really it was just like, you know, oh, that sounds cool. You know, <laughs> it wasn't really that much like, not a whole lot of i mean i guess i wanted something that wasn't i mean okay what well, there was some thought behind choosing that choosing that like um mm -hmm. i wanted something that sounded different than other things or that wasn't already something sure and you know i thought if it was something vague i could have a little more freedom maybe of what i use it for mm -hmm. because at the time I didn't really know exactly what I would have been doing. I mean, I wanted to make resin toys, but I, I wasn't sure what exactly I would be, you know, I didn't know what the future held. So I, I, I thought that doing something that wouldn't corner me would be a good idea. But basically right. the name is just, it's, it doesn't really mean anything. It's just like, uh, I mean, I, but I guess it's supposed to be, I'll say now that it's symbolic for the brand because a lot of my, mostly my early, earlier stuff didn't mean anything either. It was just, you know, style over substance. Sure. But I, I think if you look at the work, it all looks like crazy well thought out and as if, Thanks. like there was a huge backstory there, right? Even from like the first figure that you sure. made from us to like the Colonel Sandroid and the, the, yeah. What was the first one? The the Zuckus one. See some cyanoid it was. Zen, right, Xeno Cyber. Um, you know, even like, you know, I mean, the story about Emperor Xi Palpatine. You know, on the back here, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a very like involved story uh, about the People's Liberation Empire. It's funny. Um, I don't know if I told you this. Uh, we had this great experience at DesignerCon uh, last year. Um, there was a, a art gallery in China that came and it was just great for our back stock and cash flow because they came by and they bought three of everything we had in stock at yeah. the end of the show uh, to take over to China and cool. um, to be in a gallery. And then the pandemic hit and I, you know, it's like, um, yeah. but it's so funny. It's like, I, I, I can't, if they come back, I can't sell your figures. I had this been a year <laughs> earlier. Yeah, I know, I know. We kind of, that's funny. That, that's cool to, to have this that sort of global appeal. This will get someone say? selling this, you know, sent to jail in China. <laughs> Possibly, yeah. <laughs> if you read, like, uh, comparing President Xi to Emperor Palpatine, I think yeah, it's, yeah. If, if they even know what that is, like, uh, you know, someone, you know, astute might uh, put two and Proof. two together. That was going to be popular in China, I guess. Yeah. All um, right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, uh, I love the toys. Uh, you're doing a great job. Uh, what? You what? Oh, uh, Charles. We have a customer just stopped by that said they we just sold one. Yes. Oh, nice. Right, they're, they're doing well. I think they're probably more than half sold out. Um, so, oh, so anyone who's watching? Cool. They are forty-five dollars. It's an addition of thirty-five. It's really fantastic. The graphic design. There's eleven left. Well, no, Charles is buying one, right? Okay. So there's ten left. Thanks so much. Nine. I want one. Oh, uh, Janky wants one. Nine.
There you go. Nine left. Like QVC. <laughs> that's that's the next thing. It's like this is going to turn into QVC. Like you know, <laughs> we have the numbers on the screen, you know, popping up, and it's like nine left. You know, get it now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for taking the time. Oh, it's always having... great talking to you. Good luck with everything. Yeah. Good luck with school. Um, I hope that uh, you know you're continuing down the path you want to be on, and that it all works out. All right. Thanks so much. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Awesome, everybody.